Hey, what's up? This is EJK, and this is going to be an analysis, a PVZ between BO and SOS, but more importantly, an in-depth look at New Gettysburg, one of the new maps rumored to be on top of the new map list for the next season of Ladder, and already seen in Pro League, I believe I've seen it a couple times, and I don't believe it's in SSL or GSL at the moment. So, looking at new maps, there are a lot of different ways you can look at new maps. Uh, the most important are where are your attack paths, where are you going to expo. Yeah, that's that's it. <laughs> so, um, for the expos, that's one base, and then both players are going to expand to their naturals, and then this is usually where your third base is going to be there's the only other option is taking the island base as your third base so already there's a little bit of strategery going on in choosing your third base location but for the most part the players are going to choose that as your third base and then where it gets really interesting is where your fourth base is going to be so the first three bases are fairly set in stone the fourth base now can either be here here or here so you have basically three different options in taking your fourth base. And obviously taking the ones closer to the middle of the map, these two, don't really offer a fifth base alternative. Whereas if you take these two, it's you have a fifth base over there that's close by that you can expand to to continue the game on. So New Gettysburg with the expansion layouts already offers a lot of different possibility in terms of strategy. So Biel's opening up for a very standard build, just getting a fast third hatch, and he's getting link speed, and he's going to be getting overlord speed as well. One thing to note on this map is the main bases allow for you to high tech. Um, the overlord, the two air paths are over here, and the overseers can only be over here. So there's like this really big area all over here that the Protoss can essentially hide their tech in, and the Zerg can only bum rush with speed overlords to that location if they want to scout what kind of tech your opponent is doing. <clears throat> Oops. Oh my gosh, is that really not... Okay, there we go. Alright, so what SOS is doing is he's going to be ending up doing a DT rush, or I should say DT drop, and it's going to be scouted out by the speed overlord upgrade as it should be. Uh, if you're not scouting a DT shrine that's not proxied with a with your speed overlords, then you are doing something wrong because speed overlords should give you a guaranteed scout of what your opponent is doing. And Biel's speed overlord is so great that it sees the DT shrine immediately as it pops up, up to start building. <coughs> now I'm not sure if it was a little bit of a mistake by SOS or not by allowing that overlord to go into his base so far. Uh, if we take a look at where the stalker initially was, the stalker is um, in this position right over there and the overlord is over here. So if the stalker was patrolling over here it could have gotten an interception off on the overseer or overlord and I don't think it would have been able to completely stop the DT Shrine from being scouted. I think you would need a second Stalker in order to do that. But for the most part, it would have made Biel's life a lot more difficult. But Biel, upon seeing the DT Rush, knows exactly what his next moves are going to be. Essentially droning up and defending against any possible DTs and making sure he has a lair and overseers as fast as possible. Not even really as fast as possible, it's just something that he can get away with, essentially. <clears throat> so, as I was mentioning before about where you can take your third base, SOS has decided to take his third base on the island. Now, for let's just to pause the game for a second and analyze what's going on. So I said earlier that the three bases are generally these three bases. I don't like this color by the way. <laughs> I've, I've used yellow in like every single color but I can 
use different colors. Oh, there's so many choices. Let's use red. <laughs> All right, and I'm, I think this is the, yeah, this is the highlighter, so you can like kind of see stuff behind it. It's pretty cool. Anywho, let's make the, this bigger too. All right, so the three bases, okay, that's not good. So the three bases you normally want to, the three bases that you normally want to take are one, two, and three, and that gives you options for where your fourth base is going to be. However, with SOS taking his third base at the island expansion, all of a sudden he only has two options for his fourth base: this spot and this spot. So he can either take this base and be very aggressive, or he can take this base, and then his fifth base is going to be. Um, instead of the decision of where you put your fourth base, it's going to be where you take your fifth base. <clears throat> so that, I can't really say anything else about that because there would need to be a lot more practice and knowledge about this kind of a situation, but already expanding to the island base gives SOS a lot more flexibility with where he wants to, ex or a lot more comfortability, I should say, with where he wants to expand. And also, it makes his fourth base a lot easier to take, whereas on a normal expansion pattern, Bial has a lot of different options for where he wants to take his fourth base. <coughs> so with the DT drop already being scouted and SOS is just even warping in the DTs next to the Overlord, the DTs are expected to do little to no damage. Now SOS is getting Phoenix Air upgrades. This could be for of an air transition. Obviously having air control would mean the third base wouldn't be able to be harassed. <clears throat> I like him being able to snipe off those creep tumors because SOS is in fact going for a timing push. He ends up going for, or he, his idea is to do a charge slot timing push when charge finishes. He doesn't have a single forge on the way so Really, the uniqueness of his build is that his upgrade for attack is actually going into the phoenixes rather than the zealots or ground units. We see charge started right now. Now, one thing that I would have liked to see SOS do a little bit better is to not is to have tried to gotten more usage out of his DTs because obviously going for a DT shrine and then making two DTs. See, he's making the uh, archon out of the two DTs right now. Um, but going for the two DTs like that and only getting a couple creep tumors and a couple zerklings does not pay for itself. So SOS is already in kind of an uncomfortable situation. With the Phoenixes on the way, with plus one attack finished with them, I think SOS could have gotten a lot more damage done <clears throat> if he warped in perhaps two more DTs for a total of four DTs for his warp prism and then went for a dedicated attack with the DTs and the Phoenixes with plus one attack and attempting to snipe off the Overseer and do some more trickier harassment, but SOS decided to not be that flashy this time and instead uses his um, warp ins to warp in as fast or as close as possible to his opponent so that his push can hit as fast as possible. Nice little pick off on the Overseer there. So now charge is essentially finished and SOS is now going to push. There's not really a clear <clears throat> clear idea of where SOS is going to push because in this situation you can either push this way or you can push that way from where SOS appeared. Now having a warp prism and being able to warp in units means that you can essentially warp in units anywhere on the map. So if SOS for example warped in units over here or over here and then went straight for the fourth base and cancelled it, he would have been in a much better position getting guaranteed damage done than trying to directly engage Bial's army and trying to take just trying to take a head on engagement with attack move. Um, with a lower army count, with a I would say not even as good of an army as he would like, only a handful of charge lots versus even more hydralisks than charge lots. <clears throat> and the roaches and links tanking a lot of the charge lot shots, and after the charge lots are done charging, they're essentially not very good anymore, and they're just useless, slightly faster zealots. So SOS's attack gets cleaned up very easily. He wasn't in a very good spot before the DTs 
came because they were scouted so fast and the DTs doing no damage mean meant that he was in a slightly behind position. So if he was ahead, I think the attack would have been a lot more effective. But as a result of being behind from not doing any damage with the DTs, the DTs didn't pay off in any way, shape, or form. SOS should have, I think, attacked somewhere else. If he was able to attack the fourth base and get a cancel on that, or even perhaps make a second warp prism and then attack the main base and the fourth base at the same time, that's actually getting too far ahead because we don't want to change the essence of SOS's idea, which was going DTs into double star port phoenixes and then doing a plus one phoenix attack with charge lot as soon as that finishes. That was the idea of SOS's build. So either do more damage with the DTs or uh, you have to cut the DTs out or like cancel it, cancel the DT shrine if your opponent is being is like scouting it. I was actually half surprised that SOS did not cancel his DT shrine after BL scouted it because the DT shrine was only like 20 seconds from being done but I guess he wouldn't have had any units to harass with his warp prism <clears throat> So he just wanted to have some DTs around, and then he warped in the minimal amount to harass with. BL's going for the counterattack because he was able to do very good damage on SOS's attack, or he was able to do very good damage against SOS's army. And with the army lead and superior army count, oh, all those phoenixes going down. Very painful for the Protoss player. But since he was able to do a lot of damage, he's just, he's just going for a counterattack. And SOS is now starting to try to go for a counterattack on the fourth base. The War Prism got absolutely shut down, though, because the attack came a little bit too little too late. And SOS is going to try, at least because he has a third base, all he has to do is defend the natural base area. So it gives him a slight defender's advantage in a situation such as this. And that allows him to feel comfortable enough to try to harass at the fourth base. He warps in, I believe, like six zealots or something. Yeah. And tries to go for the snipe, which isn't a bad idea. But reinforcements being rallied out for Biel go immediately to the fourth base and are able to clean the zealot harass up relatively easily. And with a little bit of a. A little bit. A lot of everything and a little bit of not. A lot of. I don't even know the saying, but with like just a handful of army units that SOS has, it's not really enough to deal with this Roach Hydra snowball effect. So although SOS had a good idea with his strategy, his uh, timing was off. He played the map very well. His execution of the strategy was poor. Uh, the timing was alright. I think it could have gotten damage done if he had attacked the fourth base or a different location where essentially... Biel's army was like if you can attack with that army where Biel's army is not and try to pick away some damage, I think he would have been able to survive a counterattack and would have been able to play out the game in a somewhat normal fashion. But Biel is able to take the victory, and with solid stable play, he takes a win for CJ as well. Good game.